Hi there, friends. We just did Sandeep on our episode, talking about all the latest user experience and client updates around Windows Virtual Desktop. Hi, friends. And Sandeep just shared with us some exclusive new announcements that you have not yet heard about WVD. Join us, because we're starting right now. Hi there, friends, and welcome to Desktops in the Cloud, your technical-driven video podcast with guest speakers from Microsoft Engineering and as well the worldwide virtual desktop communities. And thanks to everyone who's supported Desktops in the Cloud, which you can do by clicking on that subscribe button and sharing our videos with others. If you want to participate in one of our episodes, ping us on social media or our website, desktopsinthecloud.com. So this episode is all around user experience and client support in Windows Virtual Desktop with one of the Windows Virtual Desktop engineering leads out of Redmond. So hi, Sandeep. How are you doing? I'm doing good. I am super excited to be here talking about all the stuff that we've been doing and uh, super excited about how uh, people have been responding to all the stuff we've been doing. Yeah, it's a real pleasure to have you here. Uh, we know you uh, for a while. You have been part of Microsoft for a while. We know you from the RD RDS days uh, and as well now Windows Virtual Desktop. So can you tell the viewer a little bit more about yourself and your role within Microsoft? Sure. Um, so I've been at Microsoft uh, for over 15 years and uh, I have spent most of the time in this space. So you can tell I totally love this. Uh, the energy that we have right now on this team right now is amazing. Can't believe that it's been 15 years. It feels like I just joined recently. Um, and just to talk about the work that we've been doing, uh, the unbelievable thing that I saw, I saw a chart like a, a couple of weeks ago where we showed uh, that we did more features in the last two to two and a half years than we did in the whole decade before that. Wow. How amazing is that? Yeah, it is really and, cool. Uh, yeah, um, and, and it couldn't be, it couldn't have come at a better time. Um, and as far as the team is concerned, I, I feel blessed. I feel, I feel lucky that I, I uh, lead a team of uh, phenomenal uh, PMs and engineers who, who build uh, all this great stuff. And they're also responsible for uh, building the strategy for the next gen of WVD user experience and also protocol, which is getting pretty up there. It's one of the best now. Yeah, that's that that's great, and uh, we know that of course. But just to uh, yeah level set the audience a little bit and and go a little bit back in time and to the future and today. So Windows for Jessup is now GA for uh, yeah more than uh, than a year, and it has made some transitions and some improvements on the platform side. We will cover that as well in some uh, some other episodes. But on the uh, like client endpoint side, there have been some transformations as well. Can you walk us through some of the latest uh, updates on that? Absolutely. Uh, the, the thing that's absolutely at the top of our mind uh, is security, uh, especially in this place where people are bringing their own devices. Uh, you know, a lot of these devices may or may not be managed. So it's important that we bring the right kind of level of security uh, which which is kind of like local. Uh, one of them, uh, which you would see on the screen right now, is screen capture protection. Uh, this is where you have IRM content, uh, let's say an email or something like that, which is showing sensitive information. You don't want it to be shared, uh, you know, intentionally or accidentally. Uh, and this really, really brings it uh, that next level of security. Here is, on the screen, you will see uh, the screen capture protection turned on on one of the sessions. The top left window that you see is also a remote session without the screen capture protection turned on. So when somebody, when the user tries to take a screenshot or a, a, a snipping using or use a snipping tool, you see that that screen, the content of that screen is still visible. On the other hand, the one in the middle, you will see it's all darkened. The reason is screen capture protection is turned on. This is a feature that's coming later this year. Uh, it's currently in private preview with a few customers. We're trying this out. Uh, we are hoping to have more people try this on later on this year. 
this is a great feature it makes sure the same level of security for remote sessions as uh, customers would get as the users would get when they're using it on lo for uh, natively installed applications it, it definitely closes the gap between like what we can do for physical clients today and as well virtual clients so does this also mean that you can avoid like people making screenshots out of Teams or in Teams meetings out of like virtual sessions? Absolutely. Uh, that is again one of the things here. You know, this is an example where you're trying to share your screen, and you can see the same session that has a screen capture protection turned on is no more visible. So yes, this is a great boon for people like me where. You know, I'm sorry, but I have shared screens uh, where where content is there, and and I've been very happy with that because I know Windows takes care of of protecting the right content. I don't have to worry about these things, uh, and and it's great. Uh, so this is a great feature that I'm looking forward to even for my day to day life. That's definitely a, a great security feature and a great update. But uh, can you share some more client-specific updates? And I, I understand you have uh, kind of an announcement to share with everyone. Absolutely. One of the questions, every time we show something like this, one of the questions we get it, oh, how do we get to the latest? And just to answer that question, we have something called uh, auto-update feature. This is very, very similar to how the, the new Edge updates itself when you close the last Edge window or you can force it and try to update it. So this is a screen that, that is our uh, you know, MSRDC, that is the Windows Win32 client. And on the top right, you will notice that there is a tiny little green icon that says there's an update. And when you look there and you click there, uh, you see that there's an update available. Now, there are two ways the update would go through. The user could choose, hey, I am busy right now or I'm done for the day. Let me just click on this button and it'll update right away. The other option is when, when the user closes the last session and they close the window, when they're done for the day, they say, okay, fine, I'm done. Let me just turn it off and it, the, the app will update itself. So from here on, the users don't have to feel uh, responsible for updating the clients. The client will update itself and they can get the latest and greatest features Every time they start in the morning afresh, the latest and greatest client is up there. That's great, and I, I know we want to have everyone move to the latest clients as much as possible, but what about if we do have IT folks who want to control that a little more deliberately? Great question. We have an option today where the IT admin can set a particular registry key uh, to not notify the user uh, and only notify when the IT admin is ready. Uh, because IT admins want to test it, app compat testing, all that, and right. then do it. We will still continue to support that. So uh, the same set of functionality that's available today will continue to work. And this is an additional thing that for the IT, um, we have a lot of customers who have asked us that, hey, just, just auto update. We don't want to control this. And this is a great feature for them. Sounds good. Now, one of the other areas that I know that uh, that you cover is on the protocol side, and I know that there's some great work happening, and uh, something that I've heard about called direct RDP. I'm wondering if you can fill in our viewers a little about that. Absolutely. Uh, direct RDP is uh, analogous to connecting to a session directly from your machine without having to go over the internet. We have a lot of customers, especially enterprise customers who use Express Route. Now, Express Route is literally hardwired going from a customer's uh, offices to the Azure data centers. So super fast, super secure, doesn't go over the internet. What this does is uh, when direct RDP is turned on, the user can then get connected directly to that session over the dedicated network pipe. This improves the functionality quite a bit in terms of uh, anything that requires lower latencies, uh, faster round trip times between the endpoint and the VM. Uh, this this actually takes them closer to that. So users using pen, for example, or the using users using accessibility uh, tools, they will see a huge benefit. Uh, so super excited about this because this is one step closer to what we want to provide. 
Uh, there are a lot of a uh, lot of lot of fun stuff coming, uh, especially around protocol uh, that I can't just wait to share. Uh, can't share right now, uh, but certainly it would be a great topic to come back and uh, talk about in this session. Yeah, we definitely love to have you back, and I, I love how that's going to not only improve the user experience and cut down on latency, but also increase security at the same time. Yep, absolutely. So this is all great. Um, Let's let's go, uh, yeah, and and continue with like sharing cool stuff, and as well as some exclusive stuff during this uh, this episode. So we all know that you can improve user experience while adding a GPU to your virtual desktops. Uh, so that's a relatively easy way uh, to improve experience. But are there any performance or media optimizations coming up uh, while yeah, improving the experience without the real need for a graphical card? So basically, we yeah, redirect to your endpoint to improve the experience and leverage the uh, resources that you have on your endpoint, for example. Great question, yes. Um, so using uh, NV series VMs really increases the performance of these applications on the VM side. So if I if I think of as a client connecting to a VM, the multiple parts that come to it, uh, the performance on the VM, like rendering the graphics, uh, doing 3D work and all that. And then the second part, which is super important as well, is that those bits getting delivered to the endpoint. And many times this latency, the, the network latency really kills the user experience. Um, for example, YouTube. It's a very real scenario. People use that. LinkedIn Learning for that, uh, for example, Microsoft Stream. People use that quite a bit for on-job uh, on uh, skills training and all that. Uh, what happens in that scenario is uh, the video, when, when it comes down today uh, to the VM, we decode that video. Uh, we uh, display that. We re-encode it and send it down. Now, all that seems kind of okay, but not really, because we are taking a stream that was encoded using multi-pass encoder, um, which means that you know uh, this uh, a file that would have, when you do a real-time encoding, would probably would be 50 MB. The same file, if you would do a multi-pass encode, put it through a multi-pass encoder, would probably be 5 MB. And you see a huge difference, right? Not only because uh, that the file size is smaller, but also, it's uh, it's easier and faster to get the bets through dynamic S264 or any of those dynamic protocols or in dynamic codecs uh, to show a more real-time experience for those videos. What we have done uh, with multimedia redirection is uh, really uh, to improve that. So what we do here is uh, we take the stream that comes from YouTube, for example, and uh, without decoding and re-encoding on the VM side, we send it down directly to the client and the client displays it. Here, in this example, you'll see we have uh, an extension. That's how we do it. It's an extension for Chrome, uh, or for that matter, any Chromium-based browser. And here, in this case, when the video plays, you will see that the, the usage, the video is real, nearly real-time, and the usage of uh, the, the CPU on the VM side is very minimal. Most of it is, uh, you know, below two percent. The total is five percent. On the other hand, if you look at today's uh, experience, where we don't have multimedia redirection, uh, it the the CPU usage is much higher because we're doing all that decode and re-encode. So CPU gets used quite a bit. So the sa exact same YouTube video, uh, we try to play it on the VM side. The experience is more jarry because you know the bits have to come and all that the frames have to come and look at that Chrome is using up quite a bit it's up to 33 percent huge huge difference from five percent to 33 percent and this humongously reduces not only the cost because the IT admins can now load more users but also improves the end user experience because the user will now get near real time experience because. We decode the video on the client side, and then we stitch that video on the browser. So what happens there is um, the, the end user will think that everything is running on the VM, whereas it's actually stitching happening dynamically on the client side. Um, 
A demo of that I showed at uh, Ignite last year using uh, Windows Media Player, but this is brand new. And that's why, uh, you know, Christian was saying exclusive stuff because yeah, we have not shown this demo before. Uh, super excited to show this demo and also show the gain that's come that comes out of this new work. Stay tuned, coming later this year again. So amazing stuff, really great stuff. And I, I, I really think this addresses a lot of feedback from, from our customers. So other great stuff is like Microsoft's new like mobile phone slash laptop slash um, like everything mostly. Uh, a new device to combine work and private and, and your laptop, your working device as well with your mobile device called the Surface Duo. It's okay. around now for I think roughly a month or so officially. And I, I predict that it definitely will change the way uh, we work in the in the future. Uh, it, it is obviously depending on how fast you adopt and change the way you work, but the technology is there and that's a good thing. So can you share some more of, uh, yeah, about using Surface Duo while running desktops in the cloud, for example? Do you have some demos, some inclusive demos for us? Absolutely. This device totally love. Here is that device. You know, the the two screens. Wow, the the form factor. Wow, this is you know the fact that um, the, that the Surface team didn't go crazy and try to have a single screen across and have the dual screen adds a lot of productivity and potential for improvements that we can bring to our app, the the remote desktop client on Android. Um, on the screen, you'll see an example of how there is PowerPoint running uh, inside a remote session, and you can use the other screen for typing or other stuff, uh, for example, watching uh, your uh, social media stream or anything of that sort that you might want to do, or maybe watching this video itself. Um, so, so this is a great example of how we can split the screen, do more stuff. Let me show you a hands-on demo of this. So here is a demo using the Your Phone app from that is connected to my Surface Duo. By the way, a fun fact, Your Phone app also uses for this particular connectivity from Windows VMs or Windows uh, endpoints to an Android. It does use our own protocol, which is remote desktop protocol. We have a, um, a subset version of that called RDP Nano. It's being used quite a bit. Same thing in xCloud. So I'm super excited about this. Remember I talked about all the features that we built in the last two and a half years, how it trumps what we built all that? A lot of improvements and uh, and magic has gone into making all of this happen. So here is uh, basically you know, the remote desktop session, uh, or sorry, the client running on the left side. And on the right side, you could do whatever you want to do. The same thing, I rotate the window and then you can, the, the phone, and you can see how the split screen works great. Now, talking about exclusive, here is another announcement and which I'm super excited to make happen. You see that? There is microphone redirection. Oh, really cool. Dean, you're excited, I can see that. Yeah, no, I, I've got about uh, eight customers who have been asking about that. They're gonna love this. Yeah, it's it's been amazing. We have, a, like you said, you know, a lot of customers ask for it. Uh, Android is pretty popular uh, for BYOD, so it made sense for us to go and invest in that. And then here, when I try to connect, uh, you will see that local um, storage is also redirected. And here is a screen, and there it is. That is PowerPoint running in remote session. Now there are a lot of other magic that uh, Surface Duo brings to the table without us having to do additional work. One of them is uh, being able to, you know, take the one screen to both the screens so that you can get more real estate. So you can see how I can use all of it. And if I have a Bluetooth keyboard and mouse connected to this, voila, I have a full desktop. I can, I can just use this anywhere, the form factor and all that. I have a Surface Pro X, which is amazing device, super thin, super light, and all that. This trumps that even more because now I can have just one device which does everything. So 
there you go. That's Surface Duo and WVD running on Surface Duo. I love that. That's that's such a, a, a great productivity story as well as a an overall device uh, concept story that uh, I think is really going to go places and change things. I love that. Um, how can uh, people keep in touch with you, Sandeep, and provide feedback about uh, WVD and, and all this stuff? I am on uh, LinkedIn at uh, slash in slash Sandeep Patnaik or on Twitter at Sandeep Patnaik. Please reach out to me if you have any questions, any suggestions on how we can make the Surface Duo experience better. You know, very early thinking, we could use each screen as one monitor very early you know we haven't even started specking this out and all that so we'll have to go figure out all those things but please let us know what else can happen reach out to me any issues you're facing feel free to, free to reach out to me i am uh, rather active on linkedin and twitter and happy to help through anything and you know go wvd all right thanks very much and you all heard it here you know we have a couple great uh, exclusive announcements and the pg wants to hear from you so definitely provide your feedback and thanks for joining us for today's episode of desktops in the cloud be sure to click that like button and the notification bell so you don't miss any of the latest stuff on wvd and we'll see you next time <laughs>